FM, 10 minutes before 8, 7.50 with Ron Bison. It's you either love this guy or you hate him. He's gained the reputation as a practical joker. K92's Ron Bison. God, I can't see what I'm supposed to start next year. <laughs> Ron lived up to his reputation. He told us to meet him at his home in Bay Hill for an interview. He arrived in his Cadillac and gave us a quick tour of what he claimed was his $300,000 home complete with Maine. The first clue to problems was Ron's answer to my question. You really enjoy what you're doing? Well... Why don't we talk about it in the jacuzzi? So I changed into the shorts that Ron provided and got into the jacuzzi. Yeah, well, wait a second. <laughs> saves on laundry detergent. When you get home from a hard day at the station, what you do is you just sit in the jacuzzi, throw a little tide in here, and that way you save money on hot water. Joke over? Uh, well, not really. Well, I gotta tell you, we got you. This ain't my house. <laughs> it was the house of K92 general manager Bob Longwell. Well, now, with jokes over, we talked about Ron's uncanny ability to insult people. Big women. Nasty, ugly, mean women. They love you. Hey, you're insulting your viewer right now. Don't you want to at least say, I'm apologizing? Hey, that's the problem. I think people are taking it too seriously. Everybody takes it too seriously. They call and complain about stuff. It's a joke. It's a joke for crying out loud. Give me a break. Don't you ever get sick and tired of apologizing for him? Every single day. <laughs> That bad. That bad. We take it into work this morning. It's a beautiful Monday. It appears Orlando listeners like being insulted because according to the latest Tapscan ratings from Metro Orlando, 12 years and over, Ron's show is number one in the morning. You know, new listeners, new potential listeners will realize that it's all done in fun and, you know, we just like to have a good time. Tomorrow we go home with WDIZ's Baxter and Mark. I'm Bob Sekoler on the Newswatch. The box. Yeah, leave your pictures and your roaches. <laughs> D.I.Z., The Morning Show with Baxter and Mark Jackson. That's Alan Baxter, and this is Mark Zemanski. Together, they're known as Baxter and Mark. The first time I tried to interview them, I was told to show up at a warehouse in Altamont Springs. They were rehearsing for an upcoming appearance of the D.I.Z. band. Both Baxter and Mark are in their 30s. Mark is married, Baxter's not. Their morning show is ranked among the top five in the city, and they won't say how much they make each year, though Mark drives a new Porsche. They've been working together for the past eight years in cities like Denver, Chicago, Houston, and Tampa. We've been together long enough, I think, where we know our quirks and stuff like that, where we've become friends, you know, well enough where we can Wait, sit there and... he's crazy, did you say? Hey, I would never say anything like no, that to not, embarrass not, him. Going through like the, cracker box. the guys spend a lot of time working together on new material. Here in Mark's kitchen, they let us watch as they put together a new skit for the morning show. Maybe Miss Helen or somebody. But we've got to have Opie explain how he gets these pictures, see? Right. When we first came here, there were no two-man FM morning shows. Nobody was doing, like, a lot of phone bits and et cetera. And since so then... So you think they're copying you? The well, since then, now there are a lot of two-man morning shows. They're all doing phone bits, and uh, a lot of the bits they've even... I mean, a lot of the bits started on our show. The high heels? You like the high heels? And yeah, wear that please. lovely taffeta cocktail. The guys get a lot of calls during their show, sometimes yeah, visitors, okay. female visitors. They show up in uh, really strange outfits at the weirdest hours, 6 o'clock in the morning, with, uh, you know, an idea in their head. Or they want concert tickets. Yeah, and they're willing to do darn near anything for it. Of course, we immediately throw them out. Luckily, Mark's wife of five years, Karen, understands. No thoughts of divorce or leaving him because no. of uh, the amount of women that are knocking on his door? And no, no, you just can't let it be a threat. News here on the morning the show guys are now going international. The beer song they wrote during the Canadian beer strike was just bought by Labatt's Beer. That could mean big bucks for Baxter and Mark. Tomorrow, WDBO's Jim Turner. I'm Bob Sekoler on the Newswatch. Good morning. Sometime this hour, you could have a $1,000 58 WDBO bumper... <laughs> Right now, 
WDAW DB on 820, 20 minutes after 8 o'clock. This is Jim Turner. Good morning. So he has gotten used to going to bed at 930 Pop and getting up at 315 in the morning to be on the air by 6. At age 38, Jim Turner spends a lot of his day here at WDBO. It's his second home, and he can give you a tour in his sleep. This is Belinda. Belinda is our receptionist. Say hello, Belinda. Hi. And George Bill. Hi. And Rebecca. Hey, this news George. people. Hey. This is Katie, the cat's kitty. Say hello, Katie. But when Jim walks out the station door in the afternoon, this is where you can usually find him. In his boat, on a lake, doing what he loves best. Bass fishing. I have high blood pressure. Believe it or not, you know, I have hypertension. I have to take medication. I'll probably take it the rest of my life. And most of it was stress-induced. And uh, one thing I discovered was bass fishing. I got into this, and uh, God is great. He's got 30 seconds. It's easy to see how Jim got the high blood pressure. Let's go! Jim's been working in radio for 15 years now. According to the latest TAPSCAN ratings, from Metro Orlando, 12 years and older, Jim has the number one AM radio station morning ratings. People are hungry for information. We've got information. We present it in an entertaining fashion. But Jim is critical of some other area radio stations. They got two guys who get on and tell dirty jokes and uh, get a couple of yucks and shock everybody. Are morning men pay too much? No, whatever you can get. And as for Jim's salary? Otherwise, somewhere between uh, minimum wage and Glenn Rinker. And how about Jim's real last name? Jim Sokoler. No, 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 it's Sokoler. Sokoler, I'm sorry. <laughs> Bruce Jenner. Tomorrow, a behind-the-scenes look no, no, at the Breakfast Club's available. Bill and Jeff. And police. This I'm Bob Sekoler on the Newswatch. Bill and Jeff, the breakfast flakes staying crunchy even in milk. They have been together on the air at Y106 for about a year now. 33-year-old Bill Cross. Good luck, twinnies. And 34-year-old Jeff Cohn. But are the breakfast club flakes as flaky in person as they are on the air? Well, you judge. This is not exactly what I had in mind. All right, I'll tell you what we're going to do, Carol. Let's try it again. Bill and Jeff claim to have part-time jobs as hairdressers. I'd like my hair frosted. No problem. Michael, I tried something a little different here. I think you're going to like it. There is a serious side to the guys. Jeff, his wife, Al, and 13-year-old dog, Sam, live in an Altamont Springs condominium. Both Bill, who's not married, and Jeff enjoy watching old movies when they're not preparing for their show. We work for four hours on the air. Uh, I would say I put in three hours at least off the air, and so does Jeff. Popularity, yes. We're playing Make Your Dog. According to the Birch Ratings now, Report, a competitor of Arbitron, Jeff and Bill's show in Metro Orlando is number one with people 12 years and older. We have the most ears listening in Orlando, period. It's obvious these guys like what they're doing. So you got to arrange all these so they're not competing sponsors. You don't wind up with two TV stores. You don't wind up with two bars. But Bill and Jeff can get very angry, especially when I told them that another morning radio team, in effect, called them copycats. I don't like people. No, I don't like people who claim that they originated something. The idea of putting two guys together in the morning has been around as long as there's been radio. I don't mind the competition. I don't like people saying things that aren't true. They weren't the first two-man two morning team in Orlando doing comedy. Talk money and the guys change moods. There are reports that you guys make $80,000 a piece each, $100,000, $125,000. What's the truth? One of the figures you mentioned is absolutely right on the money. $100,000? I'm not going to say which one. You mentioned a couple figures. One of those was right exactly it. Thank you. Enjoy. Tomorrow we wrap it up with Joy 108's Dave Sousa. I'm Bob Sekoler on the News Watch.
Joy, I want to wait a little shake and bake at the uh, Oasis tonight with Maria Moldauer. It's That's 38-year-old David Sousa, morning man and program director at Joy 108. Dave, his wife Nancy, and nine-and-a-half-month-old son Brandon live here in Winter Springs. Dave tries to relax as much as possible. The pressure is tremendous and there is no security. Uh, depending on the program director's uh, attitude toward you that day and the way you sound, you can be out of work. Now that Dave's a father, he's concerned about his job's lack of security. This afternoon, it could disappear like that and the bills will keep coming, and what am I supposed to do? Keep moving around the country? Radio uh, makes you paranoid after a period of time because of this ratings game we play. Are you concerned that you might have to leave the station? Not in the near future. I, we're doing quite well, so I, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm okay for right now. Heavy traffic in the area, the overturned car... The you would never know the pressures Dave is under by listening to him on the air, but he says that is his style, an alternative to many of the other stations in town. You turn on a radio station and you hear this, the same patter over and over again guys talking over your favorite records talking too much saying stupid things and you'll you'll hear it on everybody's radio station occasionally that's everybody including our radio station because people they don't prepare they don't get ready for what they're doing dave's been working in radio for years now miami charlotte north carolina even lakeland he's had his share of mistakes the worst was when reading a story about central america and i'm saying Machine gun fire at the U.S. Embassy this morning in Guanamana, Silly. Hey, poor heavyweight fights her, uh, fighter Greg Page. Dave, let's face it, no one's perfect. Dave Sousa, one of Orlando's morning men that sometimes can drive you crazy. That's enough. I can't stand anymore.